stood for us for our campaign with the confidence rising. I told WDF, don't switch good times are coming on E50 diving. Bank cams, reactions, watch along, still the pride of London thriving. The Eagles of South they flying. Keep your eyes on us, we ain't hiding. Yes, people. Um, it's uh, welcome to Tacteagle. I, I forgot even what the intro is. It's been such a long time. <laughs> I can't remember what the last game. I, I genuinely can't remember what the last game was, to be honest. Um, but yeah, it's certainly been a long time with the international break, and I'm sure we're all looking forward to a bit of Premier League football this uh, this this weekend. We're pre-recording this. Uh, look, wasn't it? Huh? It was Luton, I believe. Yes, it was Luton. Yeah, it was a hot heartbreak at the end. Um, so yeah, so the last tag eagle would have been uh, what's that? Like the thirteenth of March, something like that. Sixth of March. I don't even know. But anyways, today I'm not joined by JC. I'm joined by a very very special guest appearance uh, on onto the eagle eyed Rich. How you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Um... I'm just hope I do a decent job in this. I can talk tactics, but I see how you've got all the graphics and all of that. Uh, I'm going to try my best. <laughs> nice one. I mean, to be honest, all me and JC do is literally like click a button and move things around. So it's a, it's a, it's, it's, it's a good, it's, it's a good system. I think actually, to be honest, like it's, it's, it's good and it's simple. It's easy. Um, but anyway, so let's, uh, let's crack on and move on to the predicted 11. Right, so this was our. Well, this is my 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 predicted eleven. Um, so let's start with. It's quite quite small. I wonder if I can zoom in a little bit. Maybe that'll work. Oh no, that's even worse. Is that better? Yeah. All right. So I'll start off with uh, Crystal Palace first. We have a uh, Dean Henderson in goal. Um, <laughs> We have a, a back three of Joel Ward, Joachim Anderson, Chris Richards. No changes there. Um, Munoz, uh, right wing back. And Tyrant Mitchell, left wing back. Uh, Jefferson Lerma in, in the middle, along with Adam Wharton. And then behind Jean-Philippe Meteta, I've got um, Ibera Eze and Jordan Ayi. Which is, uh, do anyone uh, anyone you would change or, 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 or do you um... agree with that? No, that's about right. Maybe Wharton and Lerma they interchange anyway regarding yeah. starting positions. But I do notice that um Lerma does cover Tyreek regarding airily a lot. So I can see why you've done that. Yeah. Oh yeah, I've just I've just kind of put it there like that, to be honest. Um they like you say they interchange so much during the game. I, I I to be honest, it's been such a long time I forgot which way round it was. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've, we've got, got that back three. I think they all deserve their... Uh, I mean, to be honest, looking at our list um, of injuries, we don't really have uh, much to to change, really. I mean, Shek Decore is still out. Rob Holding is still out. Mark Gay is still out. Matthias France is still out. Um, Jeffrey Schlupp, according to Premier Injuries, has got a 50% chance of coming back. Michael Elise is ruled out. Although, to be honest, I'm taking these with a pinch of salt just because... They seem to have hinted that he might be available in the squad at the weekend, and this website saying that he's ruled out, so that might change uh, come the press conference on Friday. Uh, Raksaki's still out, and obviously Sam Johnson's still out. Rich, you were saying it off uh, off uh, off recording, but how big of a miss is Sam Johnson going to be? Do you think? We we need to, in all honesty, we need to box clever, like. With, with these international breaks. We need to just, like Arsenal and City have done, just say that the player's injured when they're not. So take it easy with them. I mean, for him to get injured, because obviously, you know what? Southgate weren't good. I don't think he was going to play him anyway. You know? And that's not because he's not been a good keeper, but he, he just likes Pickford. It's just that simple. And for him to injure his elbow during training. Oh, my. And apparently it might be season over. Yeah, well, that's the annoying thing as well, isn't it? Like when it first came out, it was like, "Ah, oh, it's, it's fine, like nothing to worry about." And then the next thing you know, like about 
a couple hours later, it turns out that he, yeah, like you say, is a it was a quote unquote race for him to be fit for the end of the season. So not only is it bad for us, but it's bad for him because he might miss out on on the Euros because of it. Yeah. So big shame, big shame. Anyways, we've got um, Nottingham Forest lineup. So I've got down Sells in goal. He seems to be he seems to be the one that started uh, in goal recently. Got Neko Williams at right back, uh, Willie Bowley and Murillo in uh, uh, in the centre back, and Toffolo as left back. Holding midfielders, they've got um, Yates and Singare. Um, the attack was a bit interesting, just based on their injuries. Um, I've gone with this. So I've gone with um, a forward line of Elanga up top um, with Hudson Adoy, Gibbs White, and Origi behind. The only reason I've done that is because, according to the same website, Premier Injuries, um, apparently Chris Wood has um, is only 50% uh, possible uh, be back. So I don't know whether he will be available or not. And also, Aaron Ee is still out. So for us, oh. obviously, that that's that's good. Yeah, Aaron Ee, the potential return is is this game, but. I think he's. I think he's been injured for a few. He's been injured for a while, so right. obviously, I don't. Th- similar to Elise, I don't think he's. He he'll be likely to start, which is good for us, obviously. However, if Chris Woods is available, I would change it like this. I drop Elanga to the left hand side. Hudson Adoy would come off, and uh, Chris Wood would be the focal point up front. That's very interesting because I would have gone Elanga on the right. Oh, what, instead of Origi? Instead of Origi. Origi comes off and Callum Hudson Odoi goes to the left. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that's one positive for, for Forrest is that they, they've they got quite a, like, um, they've got quite an interchangeable attack, I feel like. I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't know because I haven't watched them, but um, that, based on their, like, lineup, that's what it, it feels like. Um, another player as well, who I'm surprised. I'm surprised who hasn't actually been utilised that much recently. Danilo. I, I don't know if it's. I guess it's because he's perhaps not as defensively sound as uh, some of the other players. But I'm surprised Danilo's not really featured much. Yeah, he's a tiny late. player. Yeah, on the ball, I think he's a really good player. I mean, maybe it's his off the ball that's not not good enough. I haven't really watched him enough to to really say. But he's not really featured. Could he feature against us? Perhaps. Um, but Yates seems to be the, the preferred player, Yates and Singare. But anyways, um let's uh let's uh, let's talk tactics. So um Rich, would you like to go first or shall I go first? Yeah, I'll I'll go first. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, no problem. Lovely. So you're covering a forest attack. Okay, um, just prevented a little bit of a howler there, but it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so we've got Forest in the red, we've got Palace in the white. Um, I haven't done the names and stuff, forgive me, <laughs> but the, the system doesn't change. Now, the way I've set them up, and I'm going to look at the front f- six first, um, you've obviously got the front three of... Um, Callum Hudson Odoi on the left, Elango on the right, and whoever weathers Woods or Winnie, um, or Winnie up top. Now, <laughs> this one's going to be weird to analyse now that we've changed manager. Because as a 4 4 4 3 3, it's easy to say, all right, I want you or Woods will peel off onto one specific defender. But now we've got a bit of cover. And it's going to be very interesting to see how our full back, full backs are op, um, operate in this format because obviously we know that Joel Ward, I'm sure, um, Callum Hudson Odoi, he's going to be instructed to get as close to Joel Ward as possible, in my personal opinion, mm-hmm. and potentially Ilanga on this side, you know, to really isolate them, um, which then gives the opportunity 
for whether it's Nico Williams or Toffolo, whoever it may be, to come up against our fullbacks. So that's, in, in a sense, a way that they can kind of box us in. You know, um, Murillo, he's been decent at the back, to be fair. Bowley, I think he came off with a niggle the other day during the international break. I'm not 100% sure, but okay. I, I'm sure that they're going to be quite confident uh, defensively um, to deal with this. Now, <clears throat> one thing I will say, one thing I've definitely noticed, is their, their wingers are direct. Callum hudson Adoy and Elanga are direct. They are either going to drive down the line, which means obviously, whether it's Richards or even if it's, if it's Mitchell, they're going to have to follow. This will happen the same with obviously with a when you would make it either a near post or a back post run, and you expect the other winger, Helen Hudson, at this instance, to to follow. Um, bear with me, let me see if I can get a football in there. Oh, fancy! Let's get <laughs> <a spin. laughs> uh, let's try a football in now. I'm gonna drop that in. Oh, it's better, it's really small, right? Settings. I'm getting used to this, guys. <laughs> no way. I'll, I'll, I'll get sharper. Now, here is an observation that I've seen with, with Forrest under Nuno. I'm not saying they do it often, but this is what they, they can do. They Like I said, they will either drive down the line and then you're going to look to see a pass or a cross. I don't know what's happened with the football there, by the way. <laughs> Let me see. Delete object. There we go. Let's try that again. Right across the box. Here to the near post. Or you can end up having one that's going to go towards the back post. Whichever way it goes. It'd be in swing or out swinger. Either way. So we've got to obviously be mindful of those, those runners. But another factor, which is very, very key, and which we, I think we definitely need to be aware of, and this tends to happen more so when they play on the break, because I think that's where they're at the strongest, not in Forest, where they're on the break, because of the amount of pace that they have in that front line. Let's just say that Elanga, or, like I say, Hudson or Dwight, you know, let's use Hudson or Dwight for this, this instance, are hugging the touchline. Now, what they're going to do now is Hudson is he likes teasing. And what he'll end up doing, if I highlight both of them, like I saw you do, not all of them, but I would do, he's going to try and draw a player in to an area where he can either dink it to the back post or even maybe get a shot off. Now, this is where we need to be very, very alert because Hudson Odai takes a lots of shots. Um, Elanga gets into the back post loads as well. Um, sometimes his finishing lets him down. Hopefully that happens again. Mm-hmm. But I am going to highlight a specific area of the field that we need to make sure we've got covered. And this is where um, Lerma and Wharton are going to be very, very important. If it's not both, it may be one of them. This area here. Now, once I get these colors in, there we go. Right, and make sure the layer's correct. This area here, I've seen time and time again, Gibbs White, or one of the midfielders, so it could be Sangare, just loitering on the edge of the box. Um, I think against Manchester United, Gibbs White got 20 on the edge of the box. Was it Danilo? Like, they've done it a few times where there's either a dribble and a pass back or you go, they go down the bound line and cut it back to this area here. This is going to be very important for Wharton and for Lerma to make sure that they're on the right side of this. Now, obviously, you're going to focus more on forest defence, which means our attack. If we can win the ball in this sort of area, we may still potentially have our fullbacks quite high. You know, mm-hmm. and a potential overload because we have 
are two tens and then Mateta. So I think we can play this on the counter attack effectively. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the method we should take going forward. But I'm not going to go into your that's your realm. But yeah, this is yeah. how I feel we need to make sure that we're defensively solid against Forest. Yeah. Um another yeah. area I think that they are pretty decent are, are set pieces, must admit. Um attacking the set them, they may not have scored many, but they do put in a lot of dangerous balls. And I, I must say we've been a lot better defending set pieces, but we're always susceptible to them and something that we need to be aware of. Um so yeah, I think their their strength are gonna be from coming up from out wide, in my personal opinion. Um mm -hmm. Is there anything else I'd like to say about their attack? Um, yeah, I guess the difficulty is obviously not knowing who's playing up top. Because if it's Iwani, he's going to want to run in behind. If it's Chris Wood, he would like to link play. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but then if it's Elanga, he's definitely going to want to run in behind. Um, the one thing I will say we've done very well under Glasnar is... I wouldn't say we've had many teams running behind. Yeah, I think I think that's fair, yeah. You know, and, and hopefully that continues. And I think I've got to give credit to to Munoz and Mitchell for their part in it. But massive kudos is to, to Ward. Mm -hmm. you know, he, he's not been uh, he's not been excellent. But he's been good. He's been steady in that right centre-back role. And he's done a very good job. I think a solid 6, 7 out of 10 in each game. Yeah. Know? And, I mean, Munoz, he might be looking to score another scissor kick uh, this weekend, you know, after his game <laughs> from Colombia, which was fantastic. Um, but I generally think, I think we could overload this midfield, both on the defensive front and the attacking front. So, um. I, I think that gives. Nice. I, I, I hope it gives a, a comprehensive. Um, you know. Yeah. No. Yeah, that's good. That's what, good. What might come from for us? So, so yeah. would you say there would be more? Would you say it'd be more like defensive emphasis on Lerma and Wharton rather than Munoz and uh, Mitchell? Then, in that sense, if if they're trying to defend the cutbacks, I, I think so. But that that's based on us. Trust in our right centre back, left centre back, or our full backs. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? um, honestly, Callum Hudson today against Joe Ward, not confident. Yeah. Not confident <laughs> because, like I said, he's going to want to cut in a lot. Mm. Alanga against Richards, one v one defended. I think Richards will be fine, but where he might get caught out, in fact, that's that's another aspect I can talk about. Is obviously if he tucks in as centre backs normally do, and switches off. That pass there in between the centre-backs could be an option. And yeah. it's just all about whether or not he's alert to that Elanga running in from behind. Because you know what? Gibbs White is a clever player. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's yeah. I think, I, think he's a, I, I rate him really highly. I think he's a great player. Yeah, he's a clever player. Things may not be going great for him. I know, obviously, the Forest Fan TV lot, they've mentioned that. I think he took quite a few corners in the last game and they were terrible. But then, was it Callum hudson Adoy had taken one and it was really good. So, obviously, his set piece at the moment may not be up to speed, but in general, like, if they get it right, they're, they're normally a threat. Yeah, so, yeah, no, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I, 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 think, I think we will deal with it a lot better because we're now playing the 3-4-3 three, three system as opposed to if we're playing 4-3-3. Three, three. Yeah, and I mean, e even in that, what what like what you've got there in the middle, we've we've even managed to get like four, basically got four v three. I mean, as I said the only worry really, I think, is if Ward gets isolated with with Hudson Adoy or who or whoever wanders off to that left hand side. Yeah, <clears throat> and just to even on that note, um, you can see that this is something Glasner has been working on. You know, he, he really wants to keep this area of the field narrow and, mm. and compact. Literally the edge of the, the width of the 18 all the way around. Yeah. He wants yeah. this to be narrow. Um, As long as we can keep this area quiet, 
I think Lazen is happy. Oops, hold on. Where's the line? There you go. I know it's not the straightest of line, guys, but don't judge me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so if we go settings, once again, put the layer out there. Don't worry, I got you. Boom. That's the area he wants to be really, really narrow. And I guess even if we had it like, let's just say, if we're going to go super light defensive, we could always do this. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. And and then we've got even more protection and more of an overload in in those wide areas as well. Yeah, because don't forget, it so easily becomes this a five yeah. one. Yeah. You know. So yeah. That's how I think Forest will attack and how, how we'll be able to defend against it. Nice. Lovely. Lovely. I'll remove this then. Right, so I'll go on to uh, Forest Defence. And you know what? I'm quietly a little bit more confident than I was uh, uh, before before I did my research. So here we go. Right, so um, <clears throat> I'm going to make you just a little bit bigger. Oh, whoops. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. So if you go on to Sky Sports or whoever is uh, showing the game, Optus Sports, if you know, you know, um, <laughs> um, you'll know, this is what they'll say they line up in. So they'll line up in a 4 2 3 1. And in, in defense, this is generally how they look. Um, so if you get the ball in this kind of area, let's assume that Chris Wood is starting. If you're if you're in like a mid block, let's say, um, and then we're like this, say I don't know, Wharton's got the ball, whatever. Um, when they're like this, they will be in this kind of mid block, um, and they tend to actually. This is quite a rigid block as well, um, because. Even when like the ball's over here, they tend to ha keep this shape, but it tends to be a bit more perhaps collapsed um, and so on. The only time I do see it change is um, uh, if we are perhaps a bit further into the midfield. So let's say, I don't know, Wharton's got the ball here and all of these players are a bit, bit higher up. Um, what they'll do is that uh, they'll kind of ensure that uh, they they man mark a midfielder. Well, this is what I noticed uh, when they played Aston Villa. Um, so let's say I don't know they want to mark uh, Eze or something like that. Um, Yates might push up, and then it kind of, kind of becomes like a four one four one. Um, so they have that flexibility too. Other things I have noticed as well is that occasionally uh, one of these centre backs might drop as well so it kind of makes like a back five um again i think that's more just where they're following a player uh through man marking as opposed to like <clears throat> when when the opponent's in that phase then they'll drop into the back five i don't i think it's more of like a man marking kind of thing um and to be honest like i don't think defensively they're a particularly complicated team because like, let's say we've got the ball and we're trying to build out the back. So we've, well, our defense is a bit more like that, I suppose. Um, and then all the players are more back here. They're not a very high pressing team at all. Um, what they will do, so let's say uh, Joachim Anderson's got the ball here. They'll do the thing that a lot of teams tend to do. And they'll just try and block one side of the pitch. So they force you down one side. Um, which, like I said, a lot of teams in the league do. Um, so let's say that forces Anderson there. What I noticed that they will do is that they're, they'll stand off until the player receives the ball and then faces. So then what they'll do is the nearest player or whoever will tend to face. So I guess kind of like they're trying to say, OK, try and beat us one on one. I think they back <clears> themselves <throat> one on one. And then I think what they like to do then is that they like to then force the, the the play wide which again a lot of teams in the league do they like to force it wide because effectively what you're doing then 
is you're basically saying, okay, this touchline is like another player, another defender. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's what they'll try to do. And then let's say they force the ball to Daniel Munoz. What they'll then do is that, well, a lot of, a lot of the play will move over to the other side. So uh, their players will move over. What what the, um, I guess, the wing, they're not really, I guess, they're, they're not only really defend that wide, but like hudson Doyle will try to block off that shot, sorry, block off that passing lane. So then whoever's on that side is then, I guess, uh, uh, choked, I guess, is is a uh, an interesting word I've decided to use. But um, <laughs> um, you know, they've got no part. They've got no passing lane, so they're um, they've got nowhere to go. Um, that's what they try to do. And again, they'll try to. So let's say Daniel Munoz has received it. I imagine what Toffolo will do is that again do the same thing. Try to um, stand and say, you know, beat me one on one. Okay, and that's basically it. Like they don't really do anything particularly interesting besides that. Um, and so again, how do we get uh, how do we get around that? So what? How? So that's that's the thing. And I don't think defensively they're that great. What I will say is, if you allow them to go into their low blocks, if you allow them to go back into this shape, then they are difficult to break down. What they are very good at is that they're very good at defending like this kind of space here. Um, they're very good at getting bodies behind the ball and blocking shots in this space. So again, think about this formation like collapse a lot more to mm. not allow much space. That's what they're good at. So similar to what you were saying earlier, Rich, hit them. I think hit, there's a couple of things we can do. One of them is hitting them on the break so they don't have that ability to go back into that more compact shape. Um, and also as well, I I think the way that they pressure teams and they face them is actually not great if the team is good with their passing and is quick. So like let's okay, so like let's say for example, and these were examples that when I watched it back or when I watched the highlights back or whatever. Um, these were things, these were kind of holes that I saw in their um, in their play. So let okay, so let's say that so Munoz has received the ball here. Ward's kind of supporting, Wharton supporting there, and I use like here. Let's say okay. I don't think that's a. This isn't a particularly odd. This is a, a, a relatively normal position for this to be in. So let's say Toflo has moved to face Daniel Munoz. All it takes in that in that time for him to get to there to there, all it takes is for Ayu to make that run in behind and try and beat Sangare with on the with pace, or even like a deep run from from Adam Wharton, or perhaps even Ayu moves inside and then and then uh, Mateta then makes that run. Basically, what I'm trying to say is in that one, two, three, even three seconds, the amount of space that the, that we've got to run into here is ridiculous. And every single big chance I saw created against Forest in the last sort of five or six, uh, five, six, seven games, a lot of them, all of them fell within three categories. And one of those categories was basically doing this. Like Villa absolutely rinsed them just by doing things like this literally exploiting that time between their where they're where they're set to when they're then facing the player. Like I said, if we're just quick, so I mean all that takes is for Toffler to go over that. A ball to Adam Wharton, we all know that Adam Wharton is <clears throat> extremely quick on the ball. If he then finds his position, you've got Mateta through the middle, you've got Lerma potentially in support there. You've then got Jordan Ayu making that run, or even Daniel Munoz looking for for a one two. You've got so much space in behind there. And what I also notice as well is that generally the fullbacks don't get a lot of help. Alanga and Hudson Adoy don't really tend to help them very much. So they you can they can be left with a one on one or a two v one quite easily if you just manipulate the ball in the correct way. And like I said, you can do that just by doing like a one two. With a with like a third person run or something like that, 
and then you're effective you're basically got all that space to then to run into um because and also again like if you're going through the middle i do think they are quite good at defending the middle and the good thing about our attack um is that because we've got the three front players like this what that means is that they're already i think very narrow attack uh, defensive back line um they have to come more narrow because they have to deal with these three players mm. what i suspect that they will do though i think is that they will use one of these midfielders to drop and make a back three that's what i think they'll do so toflo might push out and Tangare might might follow Ayu, or or vice versa maybe uh, yates drops in to the five and then williams is is unable to to move, move up over here that's that's what i suspect they'll do but obviously that's good for us then because let's say that sangare does uh move back then that opens up i mean you've got, then got uh either hudson or doy will then have to come narrow or gibbs white will have to drop which will then isolate wood who i think is quite an easy striker to isolate um or uh, it means that you know you've got Gibbs. Well, I don't know how good he is defensively, but I bet he's not as good defensively as he is in in on the ball. So that gives us an advantage here as well. And again, even if you do have that back line, we've still got our fullbacks to then contend with, um, who would then that's effectively a, you know you've wherever they are, you've effectively got a one v one. And I imagine what, and then this is. And I imagine what what we would do is um, uh, push either Chris Richards forward or maybe Joel Ward a little bit forward or maybe Joel Ward might swap and uh, Anderson then maybe pushes forward instead or something like that. We've got a lot of scope to work with there. But especially against Forrest, I think exploiting the wings is, is a really big thing we can do. And if we do get Munoz in this position, he puts a cross in, you know, we've got three players there and we can we can do a lot with it. Um, the other thing, and whilst attacking wise, they are Forest are good at um, are good at set pieces. Defensively, they are really not very good. Um, so they've actually conceded the most goals from corners, the joint most goals from corners this season. They've conceded eleven. No oh, wow. And they've actually conceded the. Um, oh, whoops! They've actually. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, no, sorry, that's the wrong way around. So they've conceded the second. Sorry, the third most uh, shots from um, from an opposition player getting fouled. So, I think. With that in mind, I think as long as you know when we got a player like Jordan Ayew, who is probably one of the best foul winners I've ever seen mm. play, especially especially for Palace, I think if he can win some good fouls in some good places, I think we can then really give ourselves an opportunity and could potentially be, well, technically we have scored from a corner this season, but potentially we could score from another corner or another free kick. Uh, this season for you know one of the one of the fewest in the league so I think that's potentially where another goal could come from um, and also I think it links well because uh, with Forrest's defensive stats because defensively they make I think the most tackles of any team in the league per 90 so right. if they're putting in a lot of tackles chances are they're probably putting in a lot of fouls as well so I think if we can build up those fouls, get set pieces, I think I genuinely think we can we can nick a goal, even though our record hasn't been very good. Also, as well, one other thing, the final thing I would like to point out is that Cells, um, statistically, is not a very good shot stopper. In fact, none of Forest's um, shot stoppers are very good. So, just for like a bit of a, I guess, a good barometer. Um, let's look at uh, Dean Henderson. So I think Dean Henderson has been given a lot of flack this season for potentially not saving goals that he should have. 
So his um, post shots expected goals, which if anyone done watching that doesn't know what it is, is basically a measure of how good a shot is and the likelihood that a goalkeeper would save it. Um, and that's based on like loads of old data. So Dean Henderson's per 90 is minus 0.33, which isn't good, but it's minus 0.33. Nottingham Forest goalkeepers, so all three of them that have played this season, Matt Turner, who's played the most go- uh, most games, is minus 0.35, so worse. Oh, Matt, nice. Sell- Matt Sells is minus 0.61, which is almost double, <laughs> or half, or whichever way you want to look at it. And their other goalkeeper, you probably won't play, uh, Vla- Vlakid- Vla- Vlako Dimos, is minus 0.83. So... What I'm saying is basically if we are in like a position where, you know, maybe just like, I don't know, maybe JP just on the edge of the box and gets a little, little sighter, um, you know, just maybe around one of the defenders, have a shot because statistically they've not been saving the shots that they should have. Mm. So get it on target and you're, if not, uh, if not scoring, then potentially you're forcing a corner, which then links back to, um, Forest not being that good at corners. So those are the things that I would say. So just to sum up quickly, I would say hit them on transitions. Um, yeah, hit them on transitions so they're not settled in their low block. Um, and like Rich said as well, their their players aren't like in in good defensive positions when they lose the ball, like up this side of the pitch. Also as well, Oops. Um, when when we have players here and their players are facing up, exploit this space in behind here. I think that'll be really important. Uh, and then finally, try to win um, free kicks in in areas like here, like here, like here, and corners as well. Because then we can potentially get a chance at defence that has not dealt with uh, set pieces very well this season. And we can do that by winning fouls or uh, trying to force saves from the goalkeeper who haven't, hasn't been saving the shots that he should have this season. Um, and so hopefully we'll be able to get some corners that way. And uh, that's it. What's, um, yeah, what's SJ's um, expected save shot thingy? Who? Sorry? Sam Johnston's. Oh, Sam Johnson. Um, one sec. Uh, Sam Johnson's this season is minus 0.3 per 90. So, I mean, he did, he did, I, I feel like he did have a bit of a rocky patch. I can't remember when it was. I think it was before his first injury of the season. Um, yeah, it was a two against Wolves. Yeah. Um, yeah, there was a. Four, two against Spurs. Was that a home game? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, there was a... There was a we, we shipped quite a few. There was a period we quite conceded yeah. for fun. Too, so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to be honest, I'm more than happy to give both of them the benefit of the doubt just because, well, Roy Hodgson tax. So, <laughs> um, you know, I to be honest, I don't think either of them has been <coughs> that bad this season. I think that the defence... I think we've just been defensively really poor this season. Um, and I think... Yeah. yeah, and I think... I'm w- willing to give them both a second chance, for sure. So, yeah. yeah. It'd be very interesting to see how Henderson does in the Glasner system. Yeah, I think... Because I think... kicking is the concern. Because hmm. I think... Sam Johnson, I do, I do like... I feel like he's got quite a good, like, long goal kick. I think he's able to, like, relatively well pick out Mateta with a pass. Whereas, like, Henderson, like, I've, I've sat I've sat in the homesdale watching him, like, in training. And, like, I think I've only ever seen him, like, actually kick an accurate pass, like, a long pass, like, maybe, like, five times. Um, yeah. I think I think he's a decent shot stopper. Like when he first came in after Johnson got injured, the first time, I thought 
he I thought he was a good shot stopper. Like I thought he was able not just to stop shots, but also I thought um he parried shots really well as well. Mm. Like into like not very dangerous positions. Um but for whatever reason, like it seemed to just go completely to pop over Christmas. Again, maybe that's Roy just giving his negative energy to everyone and anyone. Yeah. So perhaps it's that. I don't know. But I don't know. But yeah, I I think though, no, like like even just like the stuff like Glaston said, like the the tactics is just so much more positive than before. Like I think, I don't know about you, but me going into this game, doing tacticals, like like a lot a lot of the weeks there was just nothing to really like talk about because like we would be like, oh yeah, we could do this, we could do this. Oh no, we've got Roy in charge, so like <laughs> I see, it's just never gonna happen. Oh, we should try getting behind. Oh no, wait, we've got Roy. Whereas now, like we've actually got a manager who wants to win. Yeah, and isn't scared of losing. So, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, yeah, I think you'll obviously be key to see how our fullbacks perform in this game, knowing how narrow potentially for us will be. Uh, Munoz is, has been an absolute beast. I'm just hoping Mitch has a decent game going forward. Yeah, but it's a, it's another um, area we can exploit. What do you think? What do you think about Mitchell? Because like for for me, I think I think Mitchell's got a decent. I think he's got quite a good cross on him. I just feel like he's, he is actually. Yeah. I, I just feel like it's his tu- his first touch lets him down a bit. But I don't yeah. know if he's don't know if he's scared or he actually just doesn't have. He, he also doesn't plan. have a natural attacking instinct. Yeah. True. So unless he's in like acres, he's not looking to beat a man. You know, he just wants to get a touch and cross it into the box. Um. I'm honestly interested to see how, see how Teo gets on next year. Yeah, because I think so too. If if we don't have to rely on our fullbacks to do much defending anymore, Teo will be a great outlet for us. Yeah. You know, yeah. him going forward is really good. And there's also, um, is it Vontae Williams in the academy? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got some oh, good yeah. talent coming through. I, I have to Absolutely. say, we, we do have some good talent coming I thought I thought it's a nice touch as well. Well, I mean, I know we did it under Vieira as well, but I thought it was a nice touch that like they all seem to be playing a very similar system to the first team now as well. Like there actually seems to be like like players like that will be starting, I don't know, playing at what that system at I don't know what age, but they'll yeah. be used to it and like they'll actually have a pathway for them as well. Like that actually what Parish was t- talked about after his after his self-indulgent uh, speech after uh, at the end of the season. Uh, but, yeah, no, it's actually going in the right direction. And you also think about the fact that when we went to Marbella, Deveni, Ozo, oh, yeah. Rod- Rodney, who else went out there? Uma. Um, I- Imre, Uma. Mm. Uh, Frankie Uma played what? Um, no, Rodney played left centre back. He played left wing back, I think. Yeah, he did. You know what? I actually thought I, I thought he was of the kids. I thought he was the best player along with Ozo for me. Yeah, it, I, I, I like really the luck good. of Imre because Imre went to right centre back and it's like, oh, he can play there too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sort of thing. So, yeah, yeah, no, he did. I was surprised. I was surprised that he went there. To be fair, but I mean, it's good to know that he can play there. So, because um, Imre is another one for me. Like I was. Defensively, I was what like watching him in the in the in the academy. I was a bit worried, like, can he defend? Because his attack's really good, mm. but he seems to seems to be putting that in his locker. So fair play yeah. to him; he's definitely worked on it. But with the three at the back system, the right centre back could cover that. Yeah, you know. So. Yeah, yeah. I think as well, like with the three centre backs, I do think, like. It does give some players that just that bit more protection at sometimes. Like I think that's why like Joel Ward, for example, has benefited because mm. like obviously he's not the quickest in the world. Um but I think like having the three centre backs just gives him that little bit more cover and maybe like that one or two seconds that you know, if he is facing his goal, he doesn't have to attempt to sprint. Um yeah. and I think and I think that helps even players like Imre, where maybe they do just need maybe like a little bit more cover than like a Anderson or a Gatey. But I think, yeah, absolutely. Right, should we do should we do predictions? 
Should we uh, yeah. throw, ourselves, throw ourselves under the bus? <laughs> Bear in yeah. mind, this is this is Monday, okay? This isn't yeah. like so we don't know exactly what the any other injury news or anything like that. Um, you know what? I don't know. I, I've got an, the thing is, I want to say one nil to Palace from a set piece, but I've just got a nagging feeling in the back of my head that it's going to end up a one one. That's what I've got as, at the moment. At, as it stands, at the moment, yeah. I've got 1-1. One, one. I'll go 1-0. I'll back which, us. If, I'll take a 1-1 one, because one, it's a team around us. Mm. But then I think we'll need to beat Bournemouth. Yeah. And that's on Tuesday. I mean, that's a good point. Because, oh yeah, that's, yeah, that's important. Because Forrest, um, Forrest are appealing their... Um, yeah, their points deduction, aren't they? Or they'll probably appealing... get deducted to two, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to to be fair, because I I did a I did a quick look on Twitter just of the the remaining fixtures of each team. Wait, let me find it. Um, and you know what? To be fair, I do think I honestly think we could actually get no points for the rest of the season and stay up. Yeah, L- Luton's fixtures are not not pretty. No. And also, the good well, thing is... They've always given teams problems. That's the thing, though. Well, yeah, they, that's the thing. They've always been in games. Yeah. But, like, because they... I, I worked it out, and they have they have to average, I think, slightly more points per game than they have been the whole season just, just to catch us, even if we get zero points. Mm. So... I'm hoping, and also the the good thing is as well is that a lot of the teams play each other. Like Everton that play, helped, yeah. I think five and, of the six, isn't it? Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. So obviously that's good for us because well, someone's going to lose points. So yeah, um, so yeah, I, I I do I yeah. I mean, obviously, I think a win, I think, really would put it to bed, and like that, that would be it. And we, I don't think we would have to worry at all anymore. Um, even a point, to be fair, I mm. think we'll be okay. But yeah, anything I, for those next two games, anything from three to six points, we're we're in good shape. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely, from, definitely, from definitely. All right. So, uh, anything else you want to add, Rich? Uh, no, this will be out on what Wednesday, I would assume. Yes. Yeah. 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 On on Wednesday. Yeah. Should have the preview on Thursday. If not, the new bit might be a Friday. I know there's some someone else wanted me to do something at some point on a Friday. I've just got to check my calendar. It's it's getting back to work time. <laughs> we, we've had a nice little break. <laughs> oh, oh, is it the end of the half term? Or is it? Um, yeah, but I mean, also like with international break, it's been kind of. Oh right, it's not yeah, really yeah, been yeah. about. Yeah. So, oh um, yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's been a bit we'll, quiet. We'll be back onto the, the swing of things. In fact, I'm nice speaking to Nikki. I think we might change one of the programming actually. But I'll speak to you behind the scenes. But yeah, yeah. guys, keep it nice locked. Fun. Smash the like button, please share the stream, etc. etc. And um, yeah, um, I'll leave Dan up, to close out. Up the palace. <laughs> up the palace. Eagle. Eagle.